Liberty ammunition with our Liberty Overwatch ammunition. So what this is, is it's similar to the original Liberty ammunition, but it has a little bit heavier core so that you get more reliable penetration. So what we got here is our 357 Magnum and our 9mm. It appears that our 9mm is a standard pressure because I don't see any plus P markings on it. So our 357 Magnum is a 70 grain and our 9mm is a 72 grain. Our 9mm is rated at 1720 feet per second. Our 357 Magnum is rated at 1830 feet per second. Now I was going to test this ammunition in my snub nose revolvers, but I decided to come out with my best potential guns when it comes to shooting these things to try to get as much velocity as possible. So I'm using my 5 inch Smith & Wesson M&P 9 2.0 to test the 9mm and my 4 and an eighth inch Smith & Wesson 686 to test the 357 Magnum. So those are supposed to be moving pretty quickly. So we're going to go through the chronograph, see what kind of velocity and accuracy I get at the same time. Then I'm going to do my 10% clear ballistic test. So you might see here, I have an older block in the front here. And the reason why I put an older block in the front and a newer one in the back is because when I tested this stuff in the past, it fragmented so big that I had to throw away a lot of that ballistics gel. I just could not recycle it properly. And if you didn't know, these are recyclable. So I don't want to go from the get-go ruining a brand new block and then have to try to get it right again. So we're going to use a little bit older block. So I'm just going to go into plain clear ballistics to see what the best potential of those cartridges are. After that, I'm going to do more of our real-world simulation where I have four layers of denim on this first three-inch piece here that represents our pectoral muscle. After that, we'll have a quarter-inch medium-density fiber board right here that'll represent... Our ribs are sturm. That'll be more of our real world test we'll do in addition to the plain clear ballistic test. And then I'm going to shoot up my steel target to see what kind of accuracy I can get on steel with these. So let's get started with this test. All right, first up we have our 9mm rated at 17, 20 feet per second, 72 grain. Let's see what I can get for velocity. I have my 5 inch MMP here. I had a feeling that was going to happen today. Let me go a little bit lower here. Seventeen seventy-one. Seventeen sixty-six. Seventeen eighty-seven. 1771, 1779. So we're a little bit above that rate of velocity, but not as high above it as what I thought going through a five inch barrel. So still pretty good velocity. Now our 357 Magnum is rated at 1830 feet per second with a 70 grain bullet. So two grains later, rated at 1830 feet per second. Let's see what I can get here. 1849, 1848, 1790, 1781, 1819. So pretty close to our rate of velocity. I would say overall a little bit less maybe, but it does seem pretty close on average to what that rate of velocity is. So, you know, we're looking at... A little bit more velocity with this, but it is a lighter bullet. But I still think this is probably just a, a tad more powerful. So let's hit our ballistics gel block. See how these two compare. All right, in the plain clear ballistics, our best potential shot. Let's see what we get with our 9mm. 1750. All right. Let's do that with our 357 Magnum. Let's go take a look. All right, so a lot of destructive stuff going on right here in our first part of this gel block here. And our first three inches, we actually, here's our nine millimeter, here's our 357. So our nine millimeter actually expanded out larger with those fragments than our 357 Magnum. So with our nine millimeter, we got a lot of 
expanding fragments out. And it looks like with that, those fragments all went to roughly four inches or so, maybe four to four and a half to five inches. And that core, the core caused a little less damage than the 357, but what we got is about just shy of 14 inches of penetration. I know camera parallax will make it look like it's a little further up than 14, but that's where it's at. When we look at our 357, all the little fragments didn't expand outward quite as quickly. So they went all went a little bit deeper. They're all right around maybe five inches with our 357 Magnum fragments. And our core went to about 13 and a half inches of penetration, a little more damage overall with that core. That could just be coincidental with the way it went through that gel, but yeah, so it's really hard to say if one did better than the other. They both look pretty destructive. So let's put on our denim, put on our MDF, see how they compare more of our real world simulation. All right, four layers of denim, three inches of clear ballistics, a quarter inch MDF. I don't think the denim's gonna affect this, but our rib simulation might. So let's see what we get with our nine millimeter. All right, let me set that back up. We'll hit it with the uh, 357 Magnum. All right, real world simulation, 357 Mag. Let's see what this does. Let's go take a look. So our nine millimeters simply split this MDF in half. This is our impact with our 357 Magnum. You gotta remember though, I used two different pieces of MDF, so the nine millimeter split it in half. For some reason, our 357 Magnum has two holes that look like full-size bullet holes, and then one hole going through with a fragment, it looks like. And with our nine millimeter MDF, I only see that one big piece and another little piece. I don't know where the rest of it went, but I don't think it punched multiple holes through it. So what we got going on here with our nine millimeter and our 357, very similar energy dump going on. It looks like uh, our nine millimeter core definitely went a lot further. It doesn't look like with either of these shots that really any of these fragments went through the MDF except for maybe a couple of them with our 357 where we see that hole. It looks like the nine millimeter reason why it shredded that whole piece is because you know, those fragments hit that piece. They did not go through it. They put the energy into it and just destroyed the MDF, but then those pieces did not go past that rib simulation. So essentially what you're looking at after going through the ribs is just a, just a little tiny core. Now with our nine millimeter, we got okay penetration of about 14 and a half inches. Okay damage, I guess, but at 357 Magnum, essentially all you got beyond those rib simulations is a penetration of about 10 and a quarter inches of penetration with a little tiny core going on there. So honestly, I mean, the 357 Mag had almost no felt recoil compared to what a 357 Magnum is. That being said, that is some pretty pathetic 357 Magnum performance. It looks to me like they designed the 9mm to do what it does, and then other calibers are kind of an afterthought, and they didn't really put much work into doing those. So honestly, what I'm seeing here is, you know, okay, if we're comparing these two, our 9mm is okay because we got good penetration our 357 magnum is absolutely a terrible choice i don't see anything here that looks good at all but even with that nine millimeter doing pretty well i just it, it's not for me this doesn't look like really what i want to see now granted all that being said this much damage and whatnot fragments hitting a person would that cause incapacitation from pain and shock maybe However, some of the literature on this stuff will say that, you know, those little fragments will shred organs. Well, I'm going to disagree because if it can't get past that quarter inch MDF rib simulation, it's not really going to hit much in the way of organs. So, yeah, there's a lot to be desired with this ammo. So let me shoot at the steel, see what kind of practical accuracy I can get with it. All right, so here's a close up look at this gel block and our first little bit here. You know, there's so many little pieces that would take me an hour to dig all these out out here in the field but basically you got all these little pieces that look like that not particularly impressive and then we also have our cores and i couldn't tell you 
which one of these watch batteries goes to which caliber they all look um, basically the same and you don't got much going on there you just got these little core things and they all look the same not particularly impressive looking So really there's not a lot to be said with this. I can't show you, you know, there's no point in measuring the diameter. We know that they're going to be at our starting diameter. I mean, theoretically you could measure, you know, that first three inches, how far out those fragments went. And I could just about look at it and tell you, you know, probably two inches. Does that mean it, it, it acts like a two inch expanded hollow point? Probably not. Uh, but that's a close-up look at these, so I really can't judge what we're seeing here versus other stuff. It just, yeah, that's what you get. So that's a close-up look at those. All right, I'm just going to pop off some rounds from 12 yards here. I'm going to get a sight picture and then pop them off, see how they fire for me. Kind of felt recoil they have. So 9 millimeter. let's see what this does. All right, relatively accurate for its practical accuracy. Let me try that with our 357. Relatively shootable ammo, to be honest here. So not bad in, a, in its recoil control and shootability. It does look like it's hitting pretty much point of aim for me. So let me back it up and shoot from my normal 75 yards just for fun. See how these continue to shoot for me. All right, 75 yards, mostly just for fun. You know, sometimes this hyper type ammunition doesn't shoot very good for point of impact from where you're aiming. So I do like to go back a little bit to kind of see, you know, how these things will do. So I'm just going to aim center mass. See how they do it from 75 yards for me. I'm not sure if I'm hitting. I think I am. I think it's just hitting a lot faster than what I'm used to. So I'd say relatively accurate for what they are. 357 Magnum. See how this does for me. And again, I'm not really sure if I'm hitting. Super flashy ammo. A lot of muzzle flash. So I'm not 100% sure if I'm hitting. It does look like I am. It just moves so fast and it doesn't really hit that hard at that distance. And that's really partly because you're, you're gonna lose a ton of momentum with a light 70 grain bullet or 72 grain bullet over that distance. It'll cover that distance, but you know, it, it, instead of dropping maybe, I don't know, 100 feet per second, 50 feet per second, whatever it might be with like a really heavy bullet, you're you're going to lose a couple hundred feet per second, if not more. So you're really limiting your power down range, which is kind of a conundrum here because it seemed very accurate at range, at very far range, because it's going to move out very quickly and be pretty point of impact with point of aim. But at the same time, it's kind of useless at that distance because you're not getting that really hyper velocity effect that you would get at close range. So. What I'm going to say about this ammunition, first of all, I'm going to say that the quality of the ammunition, the way it shoots, extracts, reliability, everything seems really good. You, you know, the cases seem nice, the bullets seem nice. The quality of the ammunition is good, and it seemed quite accurate for what it is. That being said, the entire concept of this is a little bit questionable. You know, it is, it does seem to be an okay ammunition in 9mm. We're getting adequate penetration. 357 Magnum looks like a, a terrible afterthought. It's just not doing that well. Uh, the powder that's burning isn't particularly efficient. Big old muzzle blast coming out, and we're not getting enough penetration. 
So looking at this ammo, our 9mm did better, but overall I would still say either a 9mm or a 357 mag. It's not for me, it's not something I would want because, you know, the whole point of this is, you know, people are saying that these little fragments go out and they, they damage every organ so it's bigger and more damaged than, you know, a traditional hollow point. And I'm going to say that I think that any type of barrier, bone, anything like that, it's really not going to do that. And at the end of the day, what you're looking at is a cartridge that's definitely going to cause a lot of tissue damage when it first hits, which could account for stopping power. But that core really is the only thing that, that's getting past the ribs. And you're only working with, with 9mm and 357, about a 35 to 36 caliber you know, little disc there. And if the person doesn't stop from the pain of that, all you're working with is that rather than a traditional hollow point where you're working with, you know, on average a, a 60, a 60 one hundredths of an inch diameter ripping through the bone and continuing to go through ribs and, you know, hit, you know, organs with that big old diameter versus this little disc. So I'm not truly sold on it. You know, it's good quality, but it's just not for me. So you guys can tell me what you think about this ammunition. So. That's what you get today. So as always, comment, share, and like, and thanks for watching.